privilege to be here with everybody and, and to bring uh, Mila out it's you know it's it's really a blessing and a gift that um, she's being able to share with us and and for us that you know we've helped create this bond this family um, you know all week all week you know just being able to share um, you know this really important time and, and where we are um, you know, especially the things that are coming through our lodges. It's, these are the type of things that have to take place. Um, these survival skills for our people, you know, has to be reawoken and for allowing that ancestral memory to, to flow once again. Um, and, and when Nigma asked this song, like she said to send it into the future. And, and after when I explained this song, like, you know, we're all going to have a responsibility to continue to share this message, to, you know, invite our friends and, you know, open up the circle a little bit more and more and, and hoping, you know, these, these bigger crowds that we could get, like this bigger network and this kinship relationship is going to be rebuilt. Um. <clears throat> My name is Mila Nakeko. I'm Dene, Dene Suthlene from Denen Day. I have been teaching moose high tanning for seven years and just recently have started, has started uh, teaching across Canada and other Indigenous communities. There's uh, an importance of our, of our Indigenous communities to learn land-based art practices such as moose high tanning to help us reconnect with the land and also to help heal those generations that have lost this type of knowledge and it helps us understand the hard work that our ancestors did for us to be here, for us to survive and be here today. It also helps us gain the skills and uh, confidence to be on the land, to work on the land, and it helps our communities come together and reconnect those those cycles that we had with our hunters and our elders and our youth and to do this type of work. It takes a community to make a hide camp happen um, and in that there's all these beautiful moments, uh, intergenerational learning and stories. We get to know each other better, we get to see who has talents in different areas that we can all incorporate and to make, make these things um, happen and just to continue to happen in our communities. Um, and traveling and working with different communities, I've, uh, I've learned that the gap in generations, it's like the knowledge is much further away generationally. I feel like it's important that we learn how to do, it, do the work uh, as close to as traditionally as possible. And I teach in my Dene way the way that I learned from my Dene elders. So I, I have to teach the way that my elders have taught me and, and just to show that whole entire process. And then when communities like the Mi'kmaq or Lusta community starts practicing in this way, and then they're able to insert their traditional knowledge in the process as they go. So I think that like 
I've worked in Cree communities and it's the same thing, just bringing your language and your traditional knowledge into the work, into the, the process that's being taught. We have to learn from each other how to uh, continue being on the land and to, to remember how to work on the land and that connection that we have. Not only is it um, important, like just culturally, like bringing back cultural practices, it's important for us to, to be on the land and, and um, harvesting, picking berries, gathering materials for our baskets or whatever the work that we're doing. It's important for us to be on the land so that we, we see the effects that are happening environmentally, like from in industry or climate change or just like expansion of like communities and cities and stuff like that, like that effect that it has on, our, on the land that we depend on for who we are as Indigenous people, our communities, our culture, and all of that type of stuff. And I think it's important for us to be able to, to see what's happening and, and protect our land in that way. And I think, I think it's important for us to use the land also because it's, we're using it. Like, we have, to, we have to be on the land, we have to protect, we have to protect those areas for, for ourselves and our future generations. I did have a, like a lot, like there's a lot, there's like a lot that encompasses like the work of high tanning. There's, it's really healing, like for myself when I tan moose hides I feel like I'm the best version, like I'm, the, this is the best part of me that comes out. Um, I love doing this type of work. When we work on moose hides we have to think positively and talk positively and be good to ourselves, to the moose hide and to like the people that we work with because um, there's still the spirit of the moose is still around until we finish the hide, till we've honored and respected that animal. And there's also like that spiritual connection from the moose to the hunter. So we always have to take care of like the hair and all the, the meat and stuff that comes off of that. That all has to go back into the bush because there's that spiritual connection from that hunter who took that, that life of that moose. And so as high tanners, we're responsible to maintain and, and like respect that whole entire process. And all of that good energy goes into that hide. Like we don't know what's gonna happen with the hides when it's done. Like if we gift it away or we use it for ceremony, it has to, it has to have all those good intentions in that hide. And uh, that's a part of the work that we have to, we have to maintain as high tanners. And just one, one thing that we have to do in that, in that way, and I always imagine that's, that's the spirit and that's the intention that like our ancestors did all of our work. We did all of our work because we don't know how it's gonna, we don't know where that work's gonna go and who's gonna use it, what they're gonna use it for. It has to be done with good intention, with respect and love that we have for that. So that, that piece of us, that energy that we put into it, that goes on, it creates positivity and love in our community. <laughs> And uh, this this song, um, it was given uh, to Don H. Capelin from Listigouche, Quebec, and uh, it had, it had came through him to, through a dream, and in the lyrics, you know, in in, in English, it translates that the whale is coming ashore and the turtles following him behind and that they're bringing a message for the Mi'kmaq people when our hard times are coming. And, uh, and I'm sure in the language, it's, it's much more in depth of what, what it means. Um, you know, but we share this song, um, you know, during the hard times, you know, especially in times of mourning when communities are suffering that loss and uh, or, or is used to help wake up the people because it, it it stirs something up in your heart and it's it's meant to open it up and many times you're like you made me cry and I'm like good it's it, that's what it's supposed to be doing like it, it's there to help open it up and allow for that healing and allowing for that that message to come through um, in whatever form that it is um, you know so it, it's really like a it's, it's a great honor and thank you for asking me to share that and you know it, and I remember people were like when did you start singing or how did you do this and and I, I remember somebody once told me like you know when you have that gift it's it's not for you like you know you're meant to share it with the people and you know so when you're asked to do things you know you do it and and I hope like you know that uh, I'm doing my job right <laughs> And, you know, thank you, well, and hey. Away 
Oh, hey, oh, hey. 